they just suddenly give you this little human and nobody tells you what to do with it. It's a bit like freelancing, really. Nobody tells you what to do with that either. And you kind of muddle it out by hanging out with other freelancers and you muddle it out by hanging out with other parents. Hey Hatchings, welcome to the Motion Hatch podcast. I'm your host, Hayley Akins. Hey Hatchings, thank you so much for tuning into the Motion Hatch podcast. This is episode 41. Today's episode actually came about after some Hatchings were talking in our Facebook community about if it was possible to continue freelancing around childcare commitments. So as I don't currently have any children myself, I thought it best to bring on Steve and Frankie because their podcast is all about parenting and also being a freelancer. So even if you aren't a parent, there's some productivity hacks and stuff in here for you as well. And my favorite comment was about not letting your kids put fish fingers in the USB input. So stay tuned to hear what that was all about. So just before we get into this episode, I did want to quickly mention the freelance contract bundle as a parent or any motion designer for that matter. I'm sure you know how important it is to get paid on time and have solid working terms in place. The contract bundle contains a commissioning contract template and a terms of service contract template. The commissioning contract template is for freelancers and small studios working directly with clients for a project fee. You can use this contract to create a statement of work and provide terms and conditions. And the terms of service contract template is for freelancers that are generally working in-house with studios or on a day rate or hourly rate. So if you haven't got a contract that you give to your clients, do head over to motionhatch.com forward slash motion contract to get all the details there about our contract bundle that we made especially for you. Now let's get into the episode. Hey Steve, hey Frankie, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Hello. Do you both want to explain a little bit about who you are and what you do, a bit about your backgrounds? Yes. Hello. My name's Frankie. I'm a freelance graphic designer, so I feel like a massive fraud being on this amazing podcast (laughs) because I don't do motion graphics. Please forgive me. I'm here because I run a community for freelance parents where we all get together and talk about the realities of working for yourself when you've got kids. And I do, as part of that, a podcast with Steve where we talk about life and biscuits. Yes, life life, life with kids in the mix, <laughs> rather than just life and biscuits. But um, So I'm Steve, and I do the Being Freelance podcast. So I'm a freelance video and audio chap, and I used to work in radio before that. And now, yeah, I also... See, that's how Frankie and I kind of met, because we both freelance and then have these ridiculously big side projects on the side, just like you do with Motion Hatch. So yeah, I do Being Freelance, which is a podcast which I've been doing for the last four years years where I chat to a different freelancer each week and then I vlog as well about that because clearly not got enough time on my hands. Yeah I mean that's pretty crazy and you both have children right like of different ages and stuff like that. Yeah so I've got a nearly four-year-old and a eight-month-old baby so I'm in the like very much the preschool stage I'm paying out for nursery all of that good stuff. And then Steve's got older kids. I have gone through that and come out the other side to find I have a six-year-old suddenly and a nine-year-old. It's going to be 10 this year, Ugh. which is ridiculous. But yeah, similar age gap between our two kids. Yeah, well, that's good because I don't have any children. So I just thought, um, you know, bring the experts on. This is why you look so <laughs> fresh-faced, you see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, like just because I felt like, oh, I, I don't have any children, but it seems like everyone in the Motion Hatch community has started talking about it. I think it's probably because um, motion design is like a reasonably young industry and everyone seems to be like creeping up to that time when they're like having kids or like some of them have have young children. So all of the good conversations are just starting out about this. And yeah, I thought it'd be good to get you guys on because obviously with the doing it for the kids podcast and stuff I thought you might be able to help us with some of the parenting questions that we have we will try our best yeah (laughs) that's all we that's all we can (laughs) that's all we can do yeah (laughs) so you're not saying you're not parenting experts then Do you know, that's the funny thing. No one is. Like, they just suddenly give you this little human and nobody tells you what to do with it. It's a bit like freelancing, really. Nobody tells you what to do with that either. And you kind of muddle it out by hanging out with other freelancers and you muddle it out by hanging out with other parents. 
There are a lot of strong parallels between being a parent and being a freelancer, for sure. <laughs> lot of common ground. Well, hopefully I can relate to some of that then and like just pipe up with some stuff that I know about freelancing. So basically this all started because uh, Natasha Hodgkins asked a question in the Facebook community about um, how realistic freelancing is like whilst kind of looking after like her new child that she's going to have. So I just wondered if you wanted to start talking a little bit about that and like how maybe she could prepare in a way or whether you think it's realistic for her to kind of carry on working freelance maybe on a part-time basis. Okay so Frankie was freelance before she had children. I went full-time freelance after we had children so actually if she's already freelancing now and about to have kids that's a similar thing to what you faced right? Mm, Yeah the first thing I want to say about preparation is that it's very hard to prepare for having kids, full stop, let alone like throwing into the mix the fact that you're self-employed. And actually, a lot of the time, if you were to sit down, for example, and write a budget about whether you can afford to pay for childcare and how you're going to work and what days you're going to work, and if you actually thought about it and made a spreadsheet, you'd never do it. Like, you really (laughs) wouldn't. Because childcare costs you a bomb and like all the rest of it. Like, you talk yourself out of it somehow. Like, there's a real leap of faith to start a family full stop. And then when you're also self-employed, it's like there's so many moving parts and so much unpredictability. Like the only predictable thing about having kids and being self-employed is that life is unpredictable. That's the one thing that you can count on. Other than that, there's like so much going on. Yeah. So be prepared to like adapt and be flexible full stop. But yes, of course you can be freelance around your kids. Like one in seven freelancers are now mothers. Like, and that's an increasing number of people is because I run this community, I'm talking to people every day who are joining and saying, I want to do this, or I'm about to do this because I want to be around for my kids. Like, yeah, you can totally do it. We're all doing it already. Come and talk to us. And that's the thing, isn't it? Because actually being freelance offers you that flexibility to decide what your day looks like, what your week looks like, or your year. And so if anything, it's better being freelance than it is working for an employer. I mean, uh, beyond like the benefits that you might get from an employer or something like that, Clearly, there's lots of pros and cons. But the flexibility-wise that you already have as a freelancer is brilliant for when you become a parent and your world gets turned upside down. I think that she was also wanted to know about like finding projects where the deadline is more relaxed and like how a lot of the questions are about like how do we, you know, do you tell your clients that you're having a child? Do you not think, you know, do you try and prepare them as well? Well, Frankie and I on the podcast always say about transparency and being honest, don't we? Mm, Totally. Yeah, 100%. So if it comes up, I would never try and hide the fact that you've got kids. In fact, if anything, it can become like a bond between you and a client, as in like a, something to relate to because you're all human, uh, just the same as it might be about football or yoga or whatever it is that you find that link. But in terms of deadlines, I think that's just about being savvy as to knowing what you can take on and then even negotiating it or knowing to turn it down. I mean, obviously, neither of us work in motion graphics. But we still work on things which need to be done either in a week or need this tomorrow. Or if somebody needs it tomorrow, you're probably more likely to go, eh, maybe not. I'm not the right person for it. Yeah. So you think it's about like trying to find those clients who maybe have a bit more like flexible kind of schedules on their timelines. Totally. Like the way you currently work is going to change like full stop. And it will change over time according to how old your kids are as well. And how like what your kids are like, like whether they sleep at night or not. (laughs) Personally, like over the last four years, for my son's four, the last four years, I increasingly work with clients that are also parents, probably partly for that reason, because they totally get it. There's no explanation. It's just like, let's just get on with it. Oh, I'm really sorry. This can't happen today for these reasons. And there's no like issue with that at all. And I haven't like gone out to do that. It's just been a natural progression that's happened for me. Um, I think partly because it makes my life easier, but also because I start to attract people that work in a similar way and in a similar situation. I found that working in like video, for example, that I was able to take on certain projects if I hired other people to work with me. 
And actually, that's kind of helped by the fact that video production is quite a, a team effort anyway. So it's it's quite normal to hire a videographer and a scriptwriter and a voiceover person and so on and so forth. But yeah, sometimes I'm not the only person working on it. So if a massive script writing project comes in, I, in fact, once I was about to go on holiday and the script writing project came in and I thought either I have to sort of abandon that bit of my holiday with the kids or I get a friend on <laughs> who is also a scriptwriter and we work together. And that was the beginning of me starting to get other people to work with. So it could be that there's other motion designers, for example, that you that you could work with, either not necessarily to give the whole project to, but like that you can combine your talents with. It takes a village to raise a child, right? That's the phrase. And it definitely takes a community of people to raise a child and a business <laughs> at the same time. Like if it's not your family, it's friends, it's other freelancers. You need to like help each other out. It's kind of the nature of the thing. In my head, what kind of brings up when you talk about that kind of thing is that you probably need, they would then need to like be charging more or at least the right amount so that you can afford to hire other people and stuff like that. Which, you know, I don't want to turn this into a pricing discussion, <laughs> but like that's what always comes up. And I, I think that some someone in the community as well was mentioning we have to charge enough so that it's worth you taking on the projects and not abandoning your family, I guess. I don't know. I'm probably saying no, the absolute no, no, wrong words, but you know right. what I mean? <laughs> you're right, because there's nothing like having kids actually to make you do your sums better as to what it is worth you doing and earning in order to pay for you to put them into childcare is insanely expensive. It's like having another mortgage, it, literally. The, the, the second the cost. most expensive childcare system in the world in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Really? Um, <laughs> yeah, high five to that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's and that's all the way through, you know, until really they're f- what four or five, something like that. So you've got this big chunk of time. So yeah, I I mean, maybe you do have to put your prices up, but it's more about being really sitting there and doing the maths as to what it is that you need to earn for your jobs, which is what we should all be doing, whether we have kids or not. Anyway, it's just that it becomes perhaps a lot more focused and obvious when you're paying someone to take your beloved child off your hands. Though it's quite nice sometimes when they do. <laughs> Shh, don't tell them. I've been self-employed like six and a bit years and I've put my prices up twice in that time and that is after the birth of both of my children (laughs) (laughs) and it's gone up quite a lot for exactly that reason because my outgoings have gone up a lot and to run my business I have this huge overhead of childcare costs which I hadn't had to deal with before yeah I mean there's a real there's a clear correlation between how much I need to earn and having my kids yeah I just think that there's like a lot of I guess like from the people who are going to have children soon or even the people who are thinking about it in my community, I just felt like there was a lot of like fear around like, am I going to lose my clients? James Taylor is asking like, should should he send like an email out to like his existing clients and say, hey, I'm just about to like have a child, you know, like hopefully we can work together soon. Like, obviously, I'm going to take a bit of time off, that sort of thing. Do you think those kind of things are a good idea? And like, how much can you sort of realistically do things like that? Or do you just have to, like you were saying earlier, kind of go with the flow of things too? I think one thing is that you have to remember that your client and the people in that office are also all having kids and stuff. So it's it's a normal thing. And also it can be a positive thing. So rather than saying, oh, I'm about to have a kid, but I hope we can work again soon, for example, it's like you're going to want to be working on awesome projects so you can show your kid how cool you are because you work in motion design. They'll be like, wow, you did that? So I think you need to get rid of the the negative side of it and concentrate on that positive side in, instead. And I think in terms of like the fear over money, for example, the great thing about being a freelancer is that you get to determine how much you charge and how much work you take on and all of that. So actually your potential to earn even more is far, like you're in control of it in a way that actually somebody in a job isn't in control of it. Like the pressure on somebody going into an office every day and getting on a train into London or whatever city or, you know, that is, in fact, makes me more scared than like being freelance and being in control of those factors in all control of all of it. You have the luxury of being able to adapt. 
like you can build your life around your kids. And that's, yeah, that's priceless, isn't it? Isn't it? That's why we're doing it. (laughs) If you've built a strong freelance business to begin with, then there's no reason why you won't adapt it. And like the length of durations and the prices and all of that and how you talk to your clients, it will all just adapt and continue to get even better, I'd say. Yeah, on the potentially losing clients thing, I'm going to be honest and say I did lose some clients. Not loads. One of them brought me in for a meeting when I was heavily pregnant and was like, we want to work with you loads. Let's do loads of work together. Great, great, great. Congratulations on your baby. And then never heard from them again after I had my kid. Anyway, they were definitely the minority. Yeah. So in terms of like whether you're going to lose your clients or not, I think emailing everybody and being upfront, I don't think that's necessarily necessary. Like I would more just drop it into conversations you're having with existing clients as and when, like if it's a a month or two months before you're going to go on leave. Yeah, you need to talk about that. But it's like a holiday or anything else. I'm not saying maternity leave is like a holiday. What I'm saying is <laughs> it's like a period of leave. Like you would, there's no difference between that time, taking that time off or going to travel around the world for three months or whatever it is you want to do. Like it's something that's happening in your life and you just, it's appropriate to drop it in when you're having those conversations with particular clients. And then obviously James is a dad, so it's a bit different. He won't get any paid paternity pay at all. But if he was a woman, he would be entitled to maternity allowance. And as part of that, you get 10 keeping in touch days. And they're called keeping in touch days for a reason. So the idea being you can keep in touch with your clients and not get forgotten and hopefully have work to come back to at the end of your maternity leave. Another way to do that is like Steve was talking about is to kind of build a community of other people and outsource work while you're on maternity leave who are you're openly talking about that with your clients. So they're sort of your maternity cover, essentially. And then you help, it helps you to retain your clients while you're looking after your baby. And then hopefully, because the freelancers you trust, they'll give those clients back to you when you finished um, your maternity leave. It's just quite difficult to navigate all this stuff. But I guess that's why it's great to have these kind of conversations and, and try and give people at least like the ideas of stuff that they could do Um, they can start having conversations with people in the community and say, hey, I've got these clients I really like working with. Do you want to cover this for me for a while and stuff like that? And um, yeah, I think that's great. And like they could do that in the Motion Hatch community or they could like come over to your community. And um, I'm sure there'd be loads of people there who are like willing to help and stuff. Totally. When I had my baby seven months ago, I had a couple of freelancers who I lined up to do exactly that. So if I went into labour early or had to be induced for whatever reason, I could hand over to them and then they'd carry on while I was on maternity leave. And now one of them is pregnant and is handing all her clients to me while she goes on maternity leave. There's like a mutual exchange of work between us, but there's no risk because we gained those clients ourselves and we're going to give them back at the end, but we're just helping each other out while we're making babies, which is quite nice. And another way to... um potentially solve the losing clients thing. Not that I think that will happen to you, but anyway, uh, if you're afraid about that is to do like a big celebratory thing when you're back from leave, when you're like announcing that you've coming back to work as it were, whether you take however long you've taken off. But like, so I'm a graphic designer. So I did a kind of like Christmas card thing because it coincided with Christmas. So I did a big like Christmas card out to all my clients and was like, hello, I'm still alive. (laughs) Hire me for some work. Merry Christmas. Like that kind of thing. Just to like, you know, make sure they don't forget you and make it a positive thing rather than please give me some work and feeling like all negative or... Imagine the fun you could have as a motion designer creating Mm, the thing for video that you send back which reminds them of how awesome you are with your talents and also has a baby in it somehow. (laughs) I quite like that idea. I was just totally imagining like someone like doing a video of themselves like an animation with like their baby or something. (laughs) That was just That would be super cute. I'd hire you off that. For sure. (laughs) So Lorna was asking as well, Lorna Weber, her idea is to transition into freelance while she's on maternity leave. And she just wondered whether she was just being insane or whether like that was a thing that she could try and do. I mean, I don't really know what the plan is. I don't know. What do you guys think of that? (laughs) She's definitely not insane. She is a lot of people I speak to on a daily basis. Maternity leave is a really good time to start a business. Um, In my experience, and a lot of women that I speak to, they're their most ambitious and most productive after they've had a baby. It's like a catalyst for creativity and like wanting to create and produce stuff and build a life for yourself, whether that's a new business idea or like a massive side project (laughs) or whatever it is. Actually, that time can be really productive. It doesn't have to be scary it can be really positive and you can produce those amazing things 
And also like she needs to know that she's definitely not alone and that thousands of women have done that before her and will be doing that tomorrow and the day after. So like there's loads of people around to support her through that transition and to ask questions to and fist pump with whether that's over the internet or in real life. Yeah, I think for Lorna, like, is she already about to have a baby? Or is she like just thinking no, no, longer term? Yeah. No, no, she, no, she's not thinking long term. She is about to have a baby. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Now I'm questioning myself, but yeah, I'm sure pretty sure. If she it is. was longer term, then like, just as anybody is like thinking of going freelance, then there's that opportunity to start. You know, if you're in a full time job, is to start freelancing on the side to start to build up that network and that confidence and so on and so forth, and also a buffer of money to help you. Money comes in handy for freelancing and for parenting, but then. If you're going into it, I don't know, like you might want to stay. It depends on the maternity package from the employer that you have, right? right, If you're taking maternity pay from your employer, it depends on your contract. But in terms of like the government, you can do as much self-employed freelance work as you want while you're claiming maternity pay from your employer, unless your contract says otherwise. Whereas when you're self-employed and you're claiming maternity pay from the government to have a baby, you can't do extra work, you'll fix those 10 keeping in touch days before you lose your allowance. So yeah, if you're going to start working for yourself when you're on maternity leave and you're employed, that's actually an ideal situation to do that because you're getting that wage from your employer while you've had your baby, but you can also build up a business and earn as much money potentially as you like while still getting paid by your employer. Oh, right. Yeah. So you mean that in the UK you get an uh you get like an allowance if you're a freelancer, but you can't work like over a certain amount of days. But if you're on maternity leave, then you could work, work as much more as you as like. A freelancer. Yeah. 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 It actually works way in the favor of people who are employed by a company. And then if in this instance, choosing to freelance on the side. So actually choosing as to when to like sever that previous employment is probably worth thinking about. But as Frankie says, it depends on your contract, especially perhaps in motion design as to like who you're working with and stuff like that. So, Yeah. And also just as a side note, because I know tons of people listen to this in the US and other places in the world, you probably have to like check (laughs) this stuff with whatever relevant country government that you have, because not everyone's based in the UK. So I just wanted to like say a side note there. Lance Clayton was asking, he said he's got three children under six and he's freelancing. So he doesn't think any podcast can help him, but I think that we'll try. <laughs> we'll try. That made me laugh. So, um, But he'd, he wants to know that how morning people can still achieve headspace and growth because he's too tired by the end of the day, but his mornings are consumed with like morning routines and the children I imagine he said that he wakes up at 5 30 so <laughs> pretty early is he waking up at 5 30 because the kids are waking up at 5 30 or by choice I don't know yeah he didn't say that but he said the only way that he's managed to do like studying and growth and stuff like that for himself is like not taking on extra clients and stuff so using his work time as like time to kind of learn more and then do you know what I mean? Instead of like now where you would work and then you would do kind of studying and maybe like side projects like after work or something, he feels like he can't do that. It's kind of a tricky one. It's a tricky one to answer in that like we're all different. And I think it's important that you get to like be self-aware enough as to know when it works best for you. So like you'll hear some people saying, oh, get up at 5 a.m. and do work before the kids, blah, 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 blah. But like that might not work for you and that might be hideous. What I do really recommend is trying not to burn the candle at both ends too much because sleep is your friend. So even if that means like scaling back your work or scaling back, if you're talking about growth or learning and things, like maybe you just have to hold back some of those plans for when they're a little bit older or something, like because your health is going to be more important than your sanity than than like trying to do all the things. I think there's a lot of pressure to try and do all the things, especially when you see people who don't have kids doing all the things. But I think you've just got to keep an eye on how you yourself are coping with that sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think um, I talked about this a lot, actually, because it's what sometimes I do is like, it's fine to take time off work if you've got like enough money, like say if you work like quite a few months in a row and then you're like, oh, I've got enough money to survive and like take a month off so that you can do some of the projects and stuff. I think that's fine. You know, I've done that all the time. 
I've done that to start doing more motion hatch stuff. And I, I think that's important to say as well, because then you would still have your mornings and evenings for your kids, but then you'd have more. Like, I think that's what he was saying he was doing at the moment, which I think that's okay as long as you have enough money in the bank. Yeah, I remember one of my guests on the Being Freelance podcast describing it as a client holiday. So they weren't actually going on holiday, but they were telling their clients, you know, I'm off for two weeks, and then they were working on their own projects. That's good. I always just tell them what I'm doing, but maybe I should just be like, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just on holiday. I'm on holiday. Like, sorry. Then they might expect you to bring back a massive Toblerone, No, It depends whether. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> if you're working in-house, yeah, you have to go back and they're like, where's our present? <laughs> I don't know. I was just in my pajamas. <laughs> um, that's never me, by the way. <laughs> I got totally distracted now by thinking about Toblerone's and pajamas. Sorry. So Marie had a question about. She basically takes a day off every week with her daughter, and she doesn't normally tell her clients, but she tells them she has limited availability. Do you think that she should be? upfront about why she isn't available she says I usually end up putting the same hours in the evening or the weekend to compensate anyway and she she just feels like the client wants every minute of her week and as a side note she charges like a flat project rate not a day rate yeah I remember her question was the one where she said something like I feel like my clients own my time or something or own me yeah clients tend to make me feel like they own absolutely every minute of my week that's what she put Personally, I would try and get rid of those sorts of clients if, if I've got kids. So I work part time now. The balance is different for everybody. In my instance, I have two and a half days a week childcare. So I try and do my work within those two and a half days a week. I never really work some evenings and weekends, but that's life, isn't it? That's freelance life, full stop. I know what days they are. I've got set days at a nursery. That's how my life operates. So I tend to be quite clear about those boundaries and like when I work and when I don't. Um, I used to have an out of office on to every email that came in that was like, I work these days. <laughs> this is my life. Um, I didn't say I have kids. I just said I work part time and I work these days of the week. Again, it depends a lot on your personality and like your finances and all the rest of it. But if you can afford to work a bit less and not feel like you're trying to maintain a full time job and feel owned by a client all the time, maybe look for slightly different clients. That's a bit full on, isn't it, Steve? In fact, more <laughs> <laughs> but then but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. Part of her question as well is about whether or not, like, so at the moment she's saying I have limited availability. Should I just tell them the truth of that, that I'm off with my daughter? I mean, I mean, you can gauge what that sort of client is like. They don't sound great. But I think that response of, like, I have limited availability is is fine. As in, like, you're not employed by them. You're a freelancer. Um, you probably have multiple projects. And so saying, oh, I can't do a call on Wednesday or I can't, you know, respond to this on a Wednesday or whatever because of other commitments, for example. It, they don't need to know that the other commitment is like currently trying to throw sweet corn in your hair and ram a fish finger into your USB hole. Like, it's... <laughs> Beware of that, by the way. So um, I think it's up to you as to how you frame it. I think simply telling them that you have other commitments is fine. If they're like a great client, then you'd be able to say, I'm not available on Wednesdays because I've got my kids with me. I used to have, when our daughter was in nursery, I used to have every Wednesday off with her at home. And the clients that I worked really regularly with, I they just knew that that was the case. And so they knew that if they phoned me on a Wednesday, I was unlikely to pick up or that I wasn't going to check my emails or I might be slower getting back to them. But if they, and if they needed a client call, you know, like with their end client, then that simply wasn't going to happen. But if they needed to reach me, then fine. But there's a kid in the background. Like they, they knew the deal. And then that just takes a certain level of stress off of your shoulders because then you're not worrying about, them and you can I mean actually the best thing is just to enjoy hanging out with that kid on that day because it doesn't last long yeah but also like they pick up on that stuff like if you're in the park and you're checking your emails and getting stressed like your kids know <laughs> like they sense it and it changes that the whole feeling of that not what should be a nice time in the park you know so if you can like set those boundaries, not only with your clients, but with yourself about what days and hours you work or don't work. 
you're going to have a much more productive work time because you're getting as much done as possible within less time and you're going to have a much more positive relationship and time spent with your kids it's like I think it can get so blurred when you work for yourself and have children and I'm again it's like do as I say not as I do because I work around my kids a lot and I try not to (laughs) but if you can afford to like set those boundaries I think it's really key and I just think that choice of language she used about feeling owned just says a lot about that client and maybe if you can find some clients that are a bit more accommodating or fit better with your new life around your kids. Marie, Frankie's got your back. (laughs) I'll back you up. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think like what it was making me think about was because she was saying that she was charging a project fee. So when I like switched from like a day rate to more of a project fee is because I felt like working remotely, especially if you're doing a day rate, you kind of sit, feel like you need to be sat in the seat all day working on that stuff. Whereas if you're doing a project fee, like normally the clients don't care as long as you get the work done, you know, cause they're still paying the same. So surely it, it shouldn't matter as much whether you're sat in the seat or not or whether you're with your kid. But then maybe psychologically you feel like you need to be thinking about it all the time, if you see what I mean. So you you can't set like specific days. Instead, you're like, oh, I've got this project I need to do by X date. And then you feel like you should be working on it all the time. So another question that I got was from Igu. I hope I'm saying that name right. They said when their daughter was born, they convinced themselves to dedicate less time to their career so the first three years was focused on her but I think they're worried that when they come back like they won't have any clients or anything they were like was it a good call I don't know I feel like this question is like you should just be like yeah I did that that's a cool thing that I did I don't know but I don't have kids so I feel like I'll just pass it to you guys I do remember a couple of years ago, yeah, a couple of summers ago, thinking, basically, I worked really hard during the summer holidays when the kids were off. And I remember at that point, like on my vlog, sitting in my car and talking to the camera like an idiot, like you do, saying, basically, what would me in 10 years time think of what I'm doing now? Like, would they think that I'm an idiot? I remember watching that clip, Steve. Is that (laughs) weird? (laughs) Sorry, It was a real kind of like epiphany for me, though. It was like, would 10 years from me you know, older me, be looking at me thinking you're an idiot for not spending more time with your children while they actually cared about you. Because 10 years in the future me suddenly has, you know, an 18 year old and a 15 year old who don't want to hang out with me anymore. And is 10 years in the future me going to care that I wasn't so focused on my business now because actually he's got all the time in the the world now to focus on, on his business. And it was that kind of thinking about that made me think, no, do you know what? I can turn stuff down and like turn down the ambition a bit and hang out with the kids now and come back to this. I think it sounds like you've done an awesome thing, to be honest. And I think also in in the future at some point, your kids will also sit there and think it was awesome. <laughs> that was beautiful. <laughs> that, that was really good. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know what to, I and feel if like they you don't, said everything. Sod them, the little buggers. <laughs> <laughs> but on the like um staying relevant thing. I think as like, yeah, being with your kids for three years, amazing. I would love to do that if I could afford to do that. But like, you've got to keep one finger in the pie, right? So whether that's following the right people on Twitter, engaging in social, like Facebook groups, if you can afford to like doing some training, I imagine in motion graphics, like graphic design as well, like there's new developments all the time, new tools, new software, blah, 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 like making sure you're up to date on that stuff. Keeping keeping one, one finger in the industry so you're not entirely like separating yourself from that yeah and i think keeping your online presence alive which can be a slight smoke and mirrors thing as to actually what you're doing but like for example when i'm looking for guests for the being freelance podcast and i'm checking it i look at so many different freelancers websites and sometimes i'll land on one and like the blog won't have been written in for two years and like maybe then i look at their twitter and that hasn't been updated for eight months and i start to think well are they even working anymore like are they like so I don't think you want to get to that point. Like I think you s- still sort of create create things and put them out there. And so it, you're still not, not necessarily top of mind, but you're still clearly visible. And when people come back and look at your stuff, they're like, oh, yeah, that person's been doing this thing. And I want to hire them to do that. And yeah, you could still create something, even if it's not for money. It could be like a passion project, a side project, whatever it is, like something to 
keep you producing, keep your brain in tick. Um, you know what I mean? <laughs> keep the machine oiled, all that. Yeah, you, m- you might find yourself making like looped gifts of like life as a parent. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, you, that's you like know, cute project. Like um, Slim Jim, isn't it? When he goes on holiday, he'll sp- or like oh, he'll yeah. spend weeks in Tokyo, for example, or New York or whatever, and every single day he creates a gif of that experience, and that that like just built his reputation even more and solidifies something that he offers. So there's no reason why you couldn't do that. While you are yeah, something that's fun to do, but also feeds that social media beast, like getting content out and feeling relevant. And yeah, it would do both, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think what he does is awesome. And I like the idea. Now we're just going to see so many like animated GIFs of like babies, hopefully. <laughs> like, Bring it please, on. <laughs> I'm like, so put them all in the Motion Hatch community. Like, like I say, if I, if I don't see a USB stick made out of a fish finger after what we've been talking about, I will be... I will be so sorely disappointed. Well, we know there's a lack of Bing gifts, so if anyone wants to get on that, <laughs> yes. that'd be great. <laughs> See, the thing is, they probably won't even know what Bing is right yet. Yeah, that's true. It's lost. It's lost. See, look it's at a CBB's program. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> you find that you start talking about the, you, you know, other people talk about adult shows. I'm just shows. like, what? <laughs> suddenly, all your I, cult- I don't know what you. <laughs> all of your cultural references suddenly come from the depths of uh, of children's TV. <laughs> I got picked on at a comedy night because I was on the front row and he was like, oh, hi, blah, 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 asking me questions. He's like, what did you do today? And I was like, uh, I mainly watched uh, Mr. Tumble with my three-year-old. And he just, he literally had no idea what I was talking about. And his, his jokes just died. It was funny. In fact, I don't think anyone in the room knew what I was talking about. There you go. Yeah, I totally was just looking blankly at you guys for a while, <laughs> thinking like, I totally don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> But then when you said it was like a parent thing, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> thank God. It's a Bing, Bing. thing. Yep. <laughs> I was like, Bing, is that like, isn't that like Google's rival? Like, <laughs> yeah, true, true. There you go. Yeah, that was really confusing. Time for it's me. It's all about context. So, yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to talk a bit about time because, you know, everyone trying to get more time if you're a parent, if you're not a parent. And, um, you know, you both do so much stuff and have kids I just don't know how you do it like both have Steve's doing like two podcasts you're doing (laughs) one and the whole thing and you have children like so how how do you kind of organize your time and is there anything that people can do as parents to kind of make things run a bit more smoothly I think weirdly I became more productive once I became a parent like I don't know it's I, I agree Time is this weird, flexible thing, isn't it, as to how much you can actually fit into it. And I think maybe becoming a parent focuses your mind as to what you want to do. Or like the fact that you only have a five hour window instead of eight in which to do work. That's like what it's like for me while the kids are at school actually makes me work better in that time, for example. And then as far as like suddenly doing lots of side projects and stuff, I think it's probably because your social life goes out the window. Like let's not. (laughs) Yes, so true. (laughs) Let's not kid ourselves. I've only recently, and like I said, our six and nine out eight kids are, and I'm only recently started like going to a pub and stuff again and seeing people and go, oh my God, this is what people do. Look at all these people having fun in a pub. So yeah, you find yourself spending a lot more time at home. I hope, maybe not, maybe you'll have a lovely social life. It's just my experience. I'll back you up, Steve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you're saying that everyone should start a podcast because they won't have any time to go and see their friends. I don't, I don't really know what you're saying. Well, no, what I'm saying is for, for a start, you find that actually, if anything, you will become more productive. And there's loads of different pro- productivity hacks, but for, certainly having children doesn't make you less productive. I think it makes you more time efficient. And then it's what you choose to do with that time, isn't it? And for us to, for some reason, we decide to do these side projects i have no idea what actual other people do who don't do these things they must have like hobbies maybe spend times with their other halves i don't know i don't know what real people do but yeah you can't do it all that's the thing but you know some some people really focus on exercise they'll probably still go out and play five aside football or go for a run and stuff but you can't you know you can't eat a cheesecake and go for a run you can record a podcast and do one here's my empty bowl totally agree on the having kids makes you more productive thing in fact I remember when I first started doing for the kids I had a conversation with somebody who literally said 
having children is the best productivity hack. Like there's no messing around when you have kids and limited time, just got to get on with it. It makes you better at adapting as well, doesn't it? Which is part of being freelance as well and making the most of your time. I was going to say the speech about having all the balls in the air. So like externally, if you look at me and Steve on the internet, it will look like we've got all the balls in the air at once and we totally got it down and everything's fine and we're producing all this stuff all the time, et cetera, et cetera. But behind the scenes, like I haven't washed for nine days and <laughs> my kids been living off like potato waffles. But I don't tell you that stuff. Like you don't know that stuff. You don't know the state of my bath right now or whatever. So like, yes, I look like I'm doing all the things, but you cannot physically do all the things. And there is a pressure, particularly as a woman and as a mother, to be seen to be like nailing everything at once and being the perfect mum, being the perfect businesswoman, blah, 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 having good nails. It's, it's a myth. It's a complete lie. And if you try and achieve that and you like reach for that goal, you will be sorely disappointed and you'll probably destroy yourself in the process. So really it's about when you have children and you're running your own business and doing stuff and creating, it's about choosing what to prioritise and what you allow to drop, basically. And for me, that's usually washing my hair. I think how I first met Frankie was big. No, right, because her Instagram stories were like the real version of parenthood compared to actually what, you you know, the glossy version of people's lives that you normally see on Instagram. That's part of like the the beauty of the, the doing it for the kids community and like Frankie on Instagram is because, yeah, it's it's not all glossy. Your hair it's looks really lovely, hard. though, by the way. It's oh, nice hair. Nice. Nice. You know, I washed it, it today. Yeah. Can you tell? Oh, right. I thought, <laughs> I thought it looked different. <laughs> you just have to put that bit on YouTube now. Um, <laughs> it did. Just so people yeah. could see. I didn't recognise it without the watsits in it. <laughs> Another thing that I've kind of come across is with a couple of people is who have kids that they feel sort of like guilty when they're doing work. Like they're like, oh, I shouldn't be doing any work because I'm like, I should be with my child, you know, like even if they've got someone else to look after them or whatever. I don't know, like kind of what you guys think of that and if you have any wise words. Like, for example, I had like a friend who was in our um, MoGraph Mastermind program in January and he was really struggling with like even working three hours a day because they him and his uh, wife work remotely so they kind of shared the childcare but just to kind of like even though he could he found that he didn't like want to sit down and like do that work because he just felt guilty like he should be with his daughter all the time and and I was I was saying like most people don't have that you know, that's like a privilege to be in that situation. So you shouldn't really feel guilty about it. But obviously I'm not a parent, so I feel like it'd be good to hear your thoughts. I mean, we all feel guilt on some level, whether you work for yourself or not, just having children and going to work is quite a bad combination at the moment in modern life. (laughs) It's full of all sorts of complicated feelings. But for me personally, yes, I feel that guilt, but I know that going to work and being away from my kid makes me a better parent. Like I come back from that refreshed and more excited about life. And like, I have things to say and I'm more creative with my kid and I want to like make stuff as opposed to just dump them in front of the TV or whatever. Like I have more energy for life when I am feeling fulfilled in my professional life as well. So like I personally, for me, I have to take that time away to work. Like I've had conversations with my other half about would it be more cost effective for me to just stop working while my kids are small because childcare is so expensive? But we both know that I would just be miserable and I'd become a bad parent. <laughs> like everyone would suffer from that. And it actually is worth us investing in childcare for me to take that time away and recuperate and reconnect with myself as an individual and then come back and be like a, a good mum, do more fun stuff. You feel guilty when you're working, when you're not working, all of that. And But that's one of the beauties of like the communities, for example, is that it makes you realise that everybody's feeling that. And that that's kind of just, you almost kind of have to shrug that off sometimes and give yourself some slack. And actually, the fact that you're getting to spend so much time with your children compared to the people who are going into offices or compared to our own parents and the generations before them is a privilege. You're absolutely right. Like I feel so lucky to be able to spend the amount of time I spend with our kids. I think you should just sort of seize that and um, and en- try and enjoy both bits of it the best you can without feeling guilty. Yeah, I think that's uh, good stuff. I can't feel like I'm like 
you know, learning so much stuff. I'm like, you're like preparing me for the future or something. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's all for me, really. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to ask you both about like how we can make more time in our schedules, like while being parents, because I, I listened to some of the Doing It For The Kids podcasts and I, I really liked one where you were talking about working in the car and stuff like that. So I just thought maybe you could uh, enlighten the Motion Hatch audience with some of your like top tips for fitting in some more work around children. That's the thing though, of what I was sort of saying about adapting, like you find sneaky ways to do, like suddenly, in fact, I went to, I took our daughter to her, her first gymnastics class at the weekend. So there's like, they're, they're all in there and then we're on the other side of this mirrored like window. It's a bit weird. If anything, it's a bit like they're, <laughs> like one flew over the cuckoo's nest type situation. <laughs> it's like some weird experiment going on. So all the parents are just sitting in one room and there was quite a few of us on our laptops, like doing our work, trying to make them... I quite enjoyed it, actually. It was pretty quiet. And they had tea and biscuits. Going back there again, don't get that as women. That's a nightmare. So yeah, just squeezing in time. Like, yeah, in that particular episode you mentioned, I talk about the fact that sometimes I will drive up to the school early, leave the car outside and work in the car and actually I'm more focused because <laughs> there's nothing else to do apart from that work or sleep so yeah you might as well like crack on and then you get extra smug points because you're already you're like you're not stuck in traffic you're not you've got a good park right outside so yeah you you start to pick up like different ways of trying to squeeze time in I think one thing that we have talked about quite a lot on on the podcast that we discovered is like the best thing you can do is like being not just transparent with your clients, but with your other half, if there is another half, like being like open about what your workload is and what you need to be doing. And like maybe they're looking after the kid on the Saturday morning while you're going into a cafe or a co-work space to work or whatever it might be, like keeping that dialogue open as a team. What did we say? It was like having a huddle. You know, like huddle, the huddle, cuddle, huddle, and then cuddle. Yeah. Uh, so the huddle from the whole um, work. God, what do they call that agile way of working, where everybody stands up and oh, they right, explain yeah. what's going to happen a, that day? Yeah. So it's a, it's they kind just of call like, it a stand up, don't they? I don't know where I worked before where they were doing that. They said stand up. They were like a stand up now. Oh, you see, because I make quite a lot of videos for like banks and I know they definitely like a huddle because once on our motion graphics, we accidentally put a C <laughs> and they were, we were telling them to have a cuddle. And it, um, litigation wise, I mean, that they, it brought them together for sure. But I feel like that's better. Well, let's just have it all have a cuddle. <laughs> I don't think we've ever talked about cuddling on the Meshat podcast before. This, <laughs> Welcome this, to parenthood. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting, um, you know, definitely off piste. But yeah, I was anyway. going to say on the like getting stuff done time thing, I like to, well, Steve does one, I'll let you say that. But Steve talks about like not checking his emails first thing in the morning to be most productive. So not getting distracted by emails. I like to do like check my emails on the way back from nursery. So I walk my son to nursery and then on the way back, I'll have checked my emails and I'll have a sense of like, what's going on that day? Who I need to respond to? So by the time I get back into my flat, I'm like, boom, I can actually do some work now. See what I mean? Or I've already like drafted some emails in my head in that five, 10 minute walk. Another good one is if you go to Ikea often, they have a free childcare like play area for over threes, I think it is. I think you get an hour basically. So you can browse the store, but they have Wi-Fi and a cafe. So you can actually get quite a lot done as well as buy some wardrobes good tip yeah next time you go to any ikea in tottenham there'll be frankie lying on a bunk bed <laughs> <laughs> doing my emails yeah <laughs> yeah so we had another question from mario which i think is quite a funny question how to work efficiently with sleep deprivation i feel like that you're not gonna work efficiently <laughs> with sleep deprivation that's why i thought it was quite a funny question so yeah maybe yeah. Well, Frankie, you're you're in this at the moment, right? <laughs> yeah. I am burnt out this week for sure. And so to try and compensate for that, I had a massive injection of caffeine at 10 a.m. this morning and then massively crashed. So I couldn't do anything for the rest of the day. It's difficult because the reality is when your kids are small, and even if they're not, some people are blessed with non-sleepers. When they're small, yeah, you're running on empty a lot of the time. 
And if you have very limited childcare, the only option is to work into the evening. So in combination with working evenings and then going to bed at 12 and your baby waking up at say one is not an ideal situation to be in. I'm going to make my usual speech about calling in support and like, if you can, taking naps. Like if you don't want to do that during a working day where you've paid for childcare, fair enough. Maybe you just ask a friend to if they've got kids, for example, to hang out for a play date and you nip into the bedroom and have 45 minute kip or whatever it is, trying to like find support and opportunities to catch up on that sleep. I'll let Steve make no, what you, I think he's going to say. Still to re- you do still come to realise that like everybody at the school gates or at the nursery gates, you, they're all in the same boat. Even the ones who are going to drop their, you know, who are going off to an office and aren't freelance. And so actually making friends with other parents is a really useful thing to do. I quite often invite two kids over, like double play date, preferably from the same family in the hope that they'll get invited back. You've just got to kind of do that. I do think as well, though, like in terms of sleep deprivation, like Frankie might throw something at me. But I do think to a certain extent, humans do adapt to it, though, right? Um, And yeah, you've got to take care of yourself. But it's just, it's like kind of like living in this permanent state of jet lag, but weirdly, you do kind of adapt to it, even if maybe you're not, okay, it's not you back on top, but <laughs> you... But I do think you need to recognise those days where it's just not going to happen. And rather than sitting at your desk, staring blindly with your eyes twitching, <laughs> like sometimes it's just better to step away and even go to bed just for like a couple of hours in the afternoon because you'll come back more energised, more productive and you'll do better work rather than just pushing through for the sake of it. And again, like when you're self-employed, one of the joys of that is that you can choose to do that. Like you're not forced to sit at your desk and battle on through, like listen to your body. Sometimes I appreciate deadlines are in the mix and all the rest of it, but. Yeah, I did that the other week and I don't even have a eight month old anymore. Just when I had a nap, I felt so much better for it. It does work, doesn't it? Sometimes. Yeah, I'm like a eight hours a night person like I've got to get that in otherwise I'm just useless so I don't know I feel like yeah I feel sorry for I was that person as Steve (laughs) says you do adapt (laughs) yeah so we've got another question from Casey Smith how how can I manage a never-ending calendar I think this is everybody (laughs) balancing a work calendar dance classes doctor's appointments six days sick days family visits um, it can be pretty exhausting. It's almost the same as if you were or weren't a parent in a way. It's just you've got more stuff. And so it depends what your brain is like and whether you like being super organized. I'm definitely super organized, way more than I used to be now. And uh, like having shared calendars with my wife, like on our iPhone, so that we, we know when stuff is happening and setting alarms as well. Because that that was one thing we have spoken about on the podcast, the, the Doing It For The Kids podcast, because when you have to pick up your kids at a certain time, your brain gets distracted maybe an hour or even two hours before that because you start thinking, God, I don't want to be the one who forgets to pick up the kids. I don't want to be the one who... So yeah, like setting alarms and stuff. So it's like just adapting all of those different productivity hacks of which the internet is like awash with and like managing your time and making them work for you and your family, not just you, but for, for your other half or for the children for that matter. Yeah, we're all about Google calendars and like just putting everything in it like literally everything. And we have some shared lists as well. So like birthday cards and birthday parties and whatever, the things that need to get done for those events. We try and share information about that. And then even then my other half's like, oh, you didn't tell me. And I'm like, it's in the calendar. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I have that too. Like everything goes in the calendar and we're still like, oh yeah, when's that thing? What, when, where are we going there? Like, yeah all the time, like double booking things in and stuff. She was also asking about like when, you know, she gets sick or her child gets sick, you know, do, would you communicate with the client, ask for extensions? Would you like get a friend to help? What, what kind of advice do you guys give in that situation? We had a whole episode, like almost about 15 minute discussion on this just the other week. But I think our key points pulling out of it were one was to have like a contingency plan, just like big businesses have contingency plans as to how to keep their businesses running, like when they're 
tower goes off or, you know, the whole building is destroyed in a weird freak fire. So you might have a contingency plan made up of other freelancers or to give your work to or family and friends to give your child to like one of the two can't do both if there's really something you've got to do another one was like being transparent with your clients perhaps and just saying do you know what i've got a sick kid today because remember they're human too and they also have people in their offices who have kids who are being sick so just saying i've got a sick kid today (laughs) be back tomorrow you know unless it's really crucial deadline most things are pretty flexible and so you can sort of come back to it yeah like cutting yourself some slack in that respect. We talked about um, if you're in a position where your other half is in an employed job, trying to negotiate with them about who's responsible, because a lot of the time it defaults to the self-employed person. But if you've got a massive deadline and your kid's sick and your other half is going into an office or whatever and is on a salary and they can afford to, to take the day off or even work a bit from home or whatever, like actually it might make more financial sense for them to take the day off than for you because they're getting paid whether they go to the office or not. And obviously your hours are connected to your income. And there was one other good one, but I can't remember what it is. Stick them in front That's of the, the telly. That's the Oh yeah, <laughs> stick them in front of the telly. There you go. No, but it genuinely <laughs> was, in that, as yeah. in don't feel guilty about sticking your child in front of the telly because actually they need to rest. And sitting still is going to do them good if they're not. Well, and TV and, these days is highly educational. Yeah, well, like we both remember as well as as kids, like enjoying those days of sick and watching telly. But now as parents, we're like, oh no, telly bad. But telly not bad. Telly not bad. Telly good. Yeah, I don't watch children's telly, but I watch other TV. Fine, stick, stick them in front out. of Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, yeah, that's fine. Everyone else can. They love see dragons. Their work and... Kids love dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I was generally like quite frightened watching the latest episode. Obviously, no spoilers, just in case someone's listening going, don't tell us what happened. <laughs> I don't think saying it was frightening would, would be much of a spoiler there. Like, there, I think they'd be more shocked if we went, yeah, God, I love that bit where they all had a massive cuddle, where they all thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, guys, yeah, come on, let's compromise and have a cuddle. <laughs> a cuddle huddle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so another question we had was about um, keeping the house tidy when you're trying to do work and look after children. We kind of touched on this a bit. What about how, getting a cleaner? Is that, am I giving good no, advice? That is, no, it is good advice. Because no, one of the things, like, you've only got so much time and the only way to get around some of those things is to outsource it. Be that outsourcing your work, outsourcing your childcare, outsourcing the tasks you've got to do, getting help with you. Like, the, about the only thing you can't outsource, really, is your health and fitness. Like, because you can even get people to bring you food and, like, send you recipe boxes and stuff these days. So, God, get a cleaner. Get a gardener. Get a paint. Unless you love cleaning or gardening or painting and decorating. Like, Frankie loves to clean. I absolutely love a good clean. I'm not going to lie. But actually, that goes back to that valuing your time even more when you're a freelancing parent is the fact that if you are, for example, taking two hours out to go to the supermarket, yeah, when in fact you could be at home working for two hours or spending those two hours in quality time with your kid instead of like shouting at a kid as they trudge around the supermarket trying to get one of those goddamn magazines off the shelves, then actually... Get the shopping delivered, get the cleaner in, get like you, yeah, you've got to justify that. But I think you should justify it. What I hear you saying on this podcast is just, you know, try and do your best and expect it to go wrong. <laughs> but it'll be well, okay. if you're taking that away, I think we've nailed it. <laughs> yes, agreed. Do you? Okay, that's good. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to like mention as well that. There are like a lot of motion designers out there with kids and stuff and it doesn't get talked about too much, but I'm just really like proud of the people that are doing it and kind of still going for stuff because I just went to NAB recently, which is a big, massive conference, like convention and uh, Tracy Bringling, I think that's how you say her name. She brought her daughter and she was at a lot of the parties with her daughter and stuff like that and it was just really great to see that and I think that I hope that we see more of that kind of thing and people just like including their kids because you know at the end of the day because they have to I guess and um, she was just like it didn't stop her from going to that big 
convention and meeting loads of people and networking and stuff she just brought her with her and obviously she had her mum helping her too but I just wanted to mention that because I think a lot of people think oh no like my career is going to end and stuff like that and to me like as someone who doesn't have kids like I don't know but when I see people like that I find it quite inspiring so I just thought I'd mention that at the end. It's definitely not the end of your career. Oh my god no not even slightly it might pivot and it might change but it's not the end. It's just the beginning. <laughs> and actually, it's really cool, the thought of your kids, like like role model wise, I, I think it's a good role model place to be, both from a business point of view, creativity, like the way you're choosing to like lead a family life, all of those things, like they're changing so much these days. And I think actually freelancing parents of setting their kids a good role model. Life and work don't have to be mutually exclusive. It's just not. Increasingly, we're trying to build lives where the two can live in harmony. And I do exactly that. I do events with doing it for kids where people can bring their kids and network and talk about work with their children in tow. They don't have to be separate. They're welcome to come. As an extension of that, like Frankie put together like a guide of co-working spaces Mm. where children are. And okay, it's this it's like a UK based one, but I'm sure around the world there must be place, similar places oh, popping up. Oh, there's loads up. in America, yeah. So like co-working spaces where they also have like a crash and like kid, like it's expected that kids will be brought along. The fact that those sort of things are coming up is brilliant. So do you want to tell everyone where they can find out more about doing it for the kids and also bringing freelance as well? For doing it for kids stuff, you can go to doingitforthekids.net and basically it's all on there. It takes you to the Facebook group and the podcast and the blog and those events that I mentioned as well. The Facebook group is so good. And um, Being Freelance is beingfreelance.com or search for Being Freelance wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, so there's the podcast and there's the vlogs and there's a community as well where we do lots of Facebook lives and things and it's all a bit silly as well as supportive. So it'd be cool to see you there. And let us know like, if that's like, you know, when you have your kid and suddenly you've turned up and listened to that. Maybe we got it all wrong and you're like, come and slate us. I don't know. <laughs> or, or get in touch we can chat bing yes <laughs> when, once you've discovered what it is you'll want to talk about it yeah yeah don't get in touch with me to chat bing <laughs> just yeah I, I won't know what you're talking about so yeah well thank you so much for coming on the show oh thanks for having us it was fun thank you Thanks again to Frankie and Steve for coming on the show and answering our parenting questions. I thought it was really awesome and really insightful and some cool little productivity tips in there and things like that. So we will put all the links and stuff to the Doing It For The Kids podcast and community in the show notes, which will be motionhatch.com forward slash 41. So do go and check them out there. I'd love to see where you're listening from today. So if you take a picture of where you're listening to this podcast episode and go and head over to Instagram or Twitter, we are at Motion Hatch. Tag us in there and we might retweet or put some of them in our Instagram stories. I'd like to know where you all are in the world and it'd be great to see what you're up to. So thanks again for listening to this show. I appreciate you all. See you.